Hello everyone. So it has been quite some time since I produced and shared with you any films here on the platform www.youtube.com. Today's film is going to be a brand and product focused film. It is also going to be a continuation of the Palest Shade series where we trial out, try out and review a particular product from a particular brand. Not only do we examine the credentials of a foundation or a concealer for its formula, we also determine whether or not it is applicable for the very fairest of skin tones, like my own. In today's film, we're going to be examining two products from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Now, Jeffree Star Cosmetics launched the very first concealer as well as the very first setting powders. They launched the Magic Star Concealer as well as the Magic Star Setting Powder on the 19th of April, 2019 AD. This is the first concealer that Jeffree Star Cosmetics has produced. It is also the first time they have brought out setting powders. Jeffree Star Cosmetics, of course, is the creation of Jeffree Star. For those of you who are not aware, Jeffree Star is a makeup artist, a singer, a songwriter, a designer, a makeup producer, as well as a YouTuber. Indeed, an entrepreneur. Here on my channel, I have actually produced and shared a Jeffree Star Cosmetics review in the past examining their liquid frost highlighters, which was a liquid highlighter. I shall definitely be leaving the applicable link to that film within the description of this film. I shall also be leaving all the applicable links to the Jeffree Star and Jeffree Star Cosmetics website and social media within the description of this film. Now I have purchased two of the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealers as well as one of the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Setting Powders from the Jeffree Star Cosmetics British retailer www.beautybay.com. And for those three products, it came to a grand total of £63. Shipping was of course free. I ordered it right away when it was launched and it arrived the very next day. Each of the concealers are priced on their website here in the United Kingdom at £21. The setting powder is also priced at £21. There were 30 shades of concealer launched with this range, as well as two color correction shades. And the setting powder was also launched with several shades. I shall be engaging you in a visual representation to show you the packaging of the product, as well as its boxing, as well as the package it was delivered in to hopefully enable you a good look at the product. The goods were delivered in a Beauty Bay cardboard delivery box to open, peel and tear the fastening, colorfully decorated on the inside with Beauty Bay branding as well as social media icons, opening the cardboard flaps with the greatest of vigor, dispersing the goods from their protective paper wrapping, revealing the Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer and the Magic Star Setting Powder. The Magic Star Concealer box is made from cardboard and has been decorated with multiple tones of pink with subtle holographic elements reminiscent of the patterns a kaleidoscope creates, each side containing information about the product as well as branding. A barcode with all the ingredients listed in fine print. The barcode and ingredients are part of a sticker that overlaps the top opening. The other part of the sticker has the applicable shade title upon it. I decided to open from the other end to prevent tearing the sticker. Once opened, it reveals a cardboard casket that holds the concealer by its base upright, preventing the concealer from flying around while inside the box. Removing its box to reveal the concealer, it is a unique design with elements of imitation brass, imitation glass and crystal, resulting in a very wand-like finial appearance, with a swivel cap and a doe foot applicator. No larger than 5 inches, measuring from the bottom to the top of the star, at 125 millimeters, the Magic Star setting powder arrives in cardboard packaging in a soft, subtle pink color with a slight hue that variates slightly. Magic Star setting powder arrives in an acrylic container in a cherry chromed color with the Jeffree Star Cosmetics emblem resin to open and unscrew the lid. The back of the lid is bubblegum pink. The resin design does not prevent it from laying flat. The internal packaging also has the cherry chromed effect as well as the bubblegum pink. To access the powder, turn the handle, revealing a paper sticker. Gently pull the sticker away to access the powder via the exit holes. And this is what the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealer in the shade C1 looks like. This is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealer in the shade C2. Now if I hold them up together, they look almost identical and I would say that they are very, very, very similar shades, except the undertone differs greatly. And this is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Setting Powder in the shade 
translucent. Now, of course, I purchased the very lightest of the concealers as well as the very lightest of the setting powders. There was indeed a white concealer launched as well as a peach concealer as well as a green concealer. Now, I would consider these sorts of colors to be auxiliary colors. They are designed to color correct imperfections, either be it under eye discoloration or if you have redness, a green concealer is marvelous for that. However, I didn't want to use a white concealer or the peach concealer today. I wanted to be very, very objective. I wanted to see how the concealer would perform amongst the rest of my makeup, as well as working with the products that I have already applied, as well as my own color corrector. I think if I were to have purchased the shade peach, I would have probably purchased the white as well, just to lift the peach shade so that it is slightly lighter because my skin is so fair. However, when examining the shades C1 and C2, I do not necessarily think it will be that necessary to apply a color corrector to my under eye area. I will be doing that today with my own color corrector, irrespective of these concealers, to see how they will layer on top. Now, as you can see, I've already gone in and applied some moisturizer. I've also applied a very light layer of foundation just so that we have a base to go in and apply our concealers on top of with. I've also applied eyebrows. I first of all stenciled in with an eyeshadow and then I went in with a gel product. I just went in with my regular products today and that is what I used. You may have gathered by now that I am also wearing a wig today. My own natural hair, I have not chemically treated it for quite some time. So I have more roots than the average oak. So it is certainly not looking reputable at the moment. So I've decided to use a wig instead. Now I must say, this wig has quite a circular round forehead, whereas my own natural forehead is quite square and of course it's quite large. In fact, I've been trying to find a tenant for it. But because the hairline of this wig is quite round, I do feel it makes me look a little bit like an egg. However, it was Easter just very recently. So I guess we could consider it convenient timing. I am of course a complete and utter novice to the practice of wig wearing. All you people that wear wigs all the time, I salute you because I am dying under this thing. It feels like I've got a stuffed animal on my head. In fact, I brought a fork along from the kitchen to sort of alleviate me from some of the severe itchiness that it is causing upon my scalp. Frivolity aside, the concealers. Now, of course, the packaging is superb. It may not be to your taste, but it definitely has been designed from head to toe and it looks unlike nothing on the market. I definitely think it looks very Jeffree Star Cosmetics. At the base of it, it is all this chamfering and beveling. It looks quite like decanter glass. I absolutely love the base part of it because the plastic has been molded in such a way it has all these lines and then it's got all these beautiful bevels at the bottom and when the light hits it, it starts to break up when you see all the rainbow colors. I'd actually say this packaging reminds me of many different things. It reminds me of glass and crystal decanters. It also reminds me of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow and many different styles of architecture that were prominent throughout the Islamic world from Morocco all the way to Saudi Arabia all the way to India. There are different styles of architecture that look slightly similar to this. It also looks quite late Victorian sort of 1830s onwards to about 1890s marvelous time. None of you are old enough to remember it. Now I'm going to go in and apply my regular color corrector. As I said already, I really want to examine the concealer as a concealer. So I'm applying it in my makeup routine as I regularly would. I of course have a light layer of foundation on already. Now I'm going to go in with some of Krylon's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W on a Charles Fox 8146405 brush. I have definitely missed saying that. Concealing any dark circles. I'm only applying a light layer of this and I'm going to buff it out momentarily because I want the concealer to really perform on top of it. Now to stipple and buff that into place, I'm going to be taking an e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush. With my color corrector now applied, I must also reinstate to you as I reinstate in all of my films, each of the foundations, powders or concealers or correctors that are to participate in the Palest Shade series are almost always lighter than a MAC Cosmetics NC15. But that is where I begin the level. Anything that is lighter than an NC15 by MAC Cosmetics will be examined to see if it is applicable for the very fairest of skin tones. With the corrector tone now applied, I'm now going to go in and apply one of the concealers directly to my face. Now I'm going to go in with the shade C2. I would say C1 has very warm undertones. And even though it is slightly 
lighter than C2. Because of the warmth in it, it looks slightly darker. C2 is definitely a lot more neutral than C1. C1 is quite warm, it's more on the peachy side of things. The highest color is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealer in the shade C1. The lower color is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealer in the shade C2. And as you can see, there is a very visible difference. The C1 is a lot warmer than the C2. Now I'm going to be applying the C2 today, which is a lot more neutral, and it looks slightly lighter than the C1. Now it has a door foot applicator. Now I will say that the handle, it is slightly difficult to hold because of the star. The star on it is quite sharp. It is slightly difficult to hold like a pen or like a brush. If you hold it by the nib and the tip, you do get quite a lot of control. Now, this is a little thicker than I expected. I'm getting a lot more product than I anticipated. Concealer doesn't really have a scent. There is a tiny, tiny little scent, and I know it's going to sound so bizarre, but it actually smells a tiny little bit like Pinot Grigio. I know that's probably quite a bizarre description, and it might sound like it's a criticism, but it's actually more my observation. Now, I'm just applying this to the areas that I want to brighten, and I'm applying it quite liberally. Of course, I went in with quite a light amount of foundation. So I'm going to use the concealer just to even out areas that I feel need a little bit more coverage. The formula is quite sheer, but the opacity is quite strong. I can definitely confirm to you now that this shade C2, and I will definitely be able to say C1 as well, are both definitely suitable for the very fairest of skin tones. As you can see, that is quite light. But once it's blended in, it will definitely match. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that on my neck. It's very easy to work with. Now I'm going to take my Furless CB2 brush and just stipple the concealer. Now I'm stippling the product. I'm not buffing or using a sponge or a beauty blender or a different brush. What I'm doing is stippling the product. And what this does, it corrects the texture of a concealer or a foundation or whatever product that you've applied that's wet. The stippling of a product almost gets it to mimic the surface of your own skin. So it makes it look really, really smooth. This concealer is actually proving to be very easy to stipple. It blends very well. Now, even though it is matching my skin, there's no question about that, we shall have to wait to determine whether or not the concealer oxidizes, even if it's just ever so slightly, it may alter the color. This is the first time that I've actually applied this concealer. Do you know, you could probably get away with wearing this as a light, foundation or a light to medium. It's actually very easy to glide over the skin. I'm going to apply a little bit of it to the nose just to reduce the redness and a little bit more of it around the lip area. And then I'm going to stipple it again. Now I have applied this concealer more like a light to medium foundation, but I've concentrated it in the areas that I want to brighten and conceal. Working with this formulation for the first time is definitely quite insightful. Because I've never worked with a formulation like this before, it is performing quite well so far, but we will need to see how it performs after a short period. I can definitely imagine for somebody like Jeffree Star, the pressure to put out a good concealer would have been very, very high. I definitely think that this concealer could work on many, many skin types because I would describe it as being a petrified formulation. When you apply it, it sits. It doesn't move around. It just sort of sits there and it doesn't necessarily dry down or slide around. It just waits for you to do your thing. And that's something that I quite like about it so far. Now, it may appear as if though it is settling in my finer lines underneath my eyes. Because I went in with a cream product just a moment ago to color correct, that is why it shall appear as if though the concealer is forming in my finer lines. However, that is easily fixed by stippling just to re-blur and redisperse the concealer and the color corrector underneath. And then you go in and apply setting powder and you press it on and that prevents creasing. Another thing that I shall say as well, sometimes a product, when you've applied it, it can sometimes almost collect around a pore. This happens with almost every concealer and every foundation. You just take your brush and you buff it slightly and then you stipple it. Buffing a product disperses it everywhere, stippling, then corrects the texture. It's a very marvelous little trick. Now I'd like to go in and set this now and see how it performs with the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Setting Powder. So far, I really like it. I really like the color. Now to set the concealer, I'm now going to take some of the Jeffree Star Cosmetics 
Magic Star Setting Powder. This also has fancy packaging, not as fancy as the concealers, but it has a beautiful pink chromed packaging. And it has been done in such a way it almost looks like it's been sprayed. So in some areas on the inside of the star, it looks slightly more silvery. So there's a slight hue to the pink chroming, which gives it further dimension. Now this has a very nostalgic scent. It smells just like candy floss, very faint. It's quite discreet. It's not too overpowering. It's soft. Now everything is looking rather seamless at the moment, but I'm now going to go in and apply a little bit of the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. And I'm applying that on a Wayne Goss number two brush. I'm applying it to the underneath of the eyes first, just to set the area that is prone to creasing. And I don't want to apply too much of this. Now I applied a little bit too much to the upper part of the cheek. It's quite a dry formula. I wouldn't say it's chalky. It almost reminds me a little bit if I take a tiny bit of it in my hands. It's very similar to the Laura Mercier powders, but it doesn't have that silky wetness that they have. This is definitely more of a dry powder, but I applied quite a lot of it and it's gone very, very matte here. And if I am to look at it in my magnified glass, sometimes when you over apply powders or apply a great concentration of powder to a wet product, be it a foundation or be it a concealer, be it liquid or cream or whatever formulation, it can sometimes take off product when you've applied too much powder. I have not really experienced that with this powder and this concealer. Now, even though I have a suspicion that the concealer and the setting powder will be formulated to work quite well together, I definitely think that the concealer independent of the setting powder will perform quite well if it is over powdered. I also think that if you were to employ the setting powder on top of a different concealer, be it another one that you have, I don't necessarily think it would take off the product. It would depend on what you are setting. But from what I have experienced so far of this setting powder, I don't really think you would get that. Now I'm applying it on a MAC 133 brush, just a very liberal amount of it, just to set the remaining part of the concealer. Although from what I'm experiencing so far, I don't imagine this concealer is the kind of thing that I think would move around too much. Now I use this powder quite sparingly. I just applied far too much of it and I inhaled quite a bit of it. Now, as you can see, once you apply a powder to a product, it darkens slightly because you are mattifying it. A product that is still wet will always look a little bit lighter because it is deflecting the light. Once you matte it down, it is no longer able to deflect the light. Now I'm going to go in and apply some eyeshadow, some contour, a little bit of blusher and lipstick, but I want to keep the look very, very simple and keep our focus on the skin and the concealer. Now for eyes and contour, I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to be taking some colors from the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blue Blood Palette. I shall definitely need to do a review on this at a later point. Now I'm going to go in with a combination of the shades Wealthy, Priceless and Celebrity Skin. Wealthy across the eyelid, just buffing it across the lid. And I'm going to use this as our base color. I'm just going over the eyelid with a Zoba 2 to 8 brush and now switching to an Anastasia A24 brush just to wash over the eyelid with that color and really pack it on. But I don't want anything too strong. I just want a little bit of definition. Wealthy is a color that isn't that far off my natural skin tone. Now I'm going to go in with a much warmer tone. This is actually a lovely color called Priceless. I'm just going to take that through the socket slightly like brulee by MAC Cosmetics, but substantially warmer. As you will be able to see, that's a lot warmer, but I don't want to apply too much of it, and I'm just winging it out and up ever so slightly. I want it to be very seamless. One way to ensure seamlessness is to apply the majority of the product through the socket or to where you want the concentration of the product to be, but where you want it to fade, when you get to the point where you think I need to add a little bit more product, wing it up and out slightly and just buff it over and take it up into the temple. That way you get a really soft, hue of color up into the temple. Now I'm taking some of that priceless color to the underneath of the eye and I'm applying it on a Charles Fox 8146031 brush and duplicating the same procedure on the left eye. And I'm taking it quite far into the inner corner because it's quite a warm color. It's actually very warm. It will contrast with the blue in my eye, enhancing their appearance and making them appear more vibrant. And now I'm taking a clean MAC 217 and I'm just buffing those edges and taking it round into the socket and I'm just swooping it over everything, just softening everything down just to ensure
seamlessness. Now I'm going to go in with the Celebrity Skin Color. What I'm doing first of all is going back in with our Anastasia A24 brush. And I'm just packing that Celebrity Skin Color onto the eyelid. It's a very lovely taupe color. And then going back in with a Charles Fox 8146031 brush, I'm applying a little bit of that Celebrity Skin to the underneath. And then just going back in with a 217 and just blending everything through. I'm going to leave the eyes like that. And I'm now going to go in and curl my eyelashes and apply mascara. Today, I'm going to be taking some QBS eyelash colors. For mascara, I'm going to be taking some of Estee Lauder's Double Wear Zero Smudge Lengthening Mascara. I'm just going to apply a liberal amount of it today. With the eyes complete, I'm now going to move on to cheeks. I shall actually be going back into a Blue Blood palette from before and taking some of that Celebrity Skin color. And I shall be applying the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Celebrity Skin on an Inglot 38 SS brush. Tiny bit of it first, applied a little bit too much there. Don't want to apply too much, so I'm just going to really stipple it on. And this creates a really seamless gradient. This celebrity skin color is more on the warm side of things, um, but it can definitely work as a contour for the very fairest of skin tones. And as you can see, that's just given us subtle definition. It's amazing what the final status in a look can actually do. Half the time when I'm getting ready, I'm there thinking, oh, Jesus, Mary, and all the blessing saints, what on earth have I done? And then as soon as you get the final things done, all makes sense. Life all of a sudden makes sense. Now, I'm going to be quite hostile towards the concealer and start to buff product across it just to see how well it performs because when you buff a product like that round and round and round, it disturbs the formation of the foundation or the concealer for which that you have applied. So by buffing the product over it, it will see whether or not it has the capacity to remain intact. And I'm taking my Revlon highly magnified mirror and I am buffing my contour brush and some contour over the cheek to examine whether or not the concealer has the capacity to withstand such abrasion. It seems to have fared quite well. No product will remain entirely on the skin once you are abrasive towards it. But I've always thought a product that can withstand abrasion is worthy of repute. Now I have looked throughout my Jeffree Star Cosmetics arsenal and I can't seem to find a blusher shade. So it gives me the opportunity to go in with my favorite blusher. Now for blusher, I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Blush Baby. And I am applying it to the skin using an Anastasia A22 brush just to give the look some more warmth. As it is springtime here in England and I shall be spending a lot of time avoiding the sun. Now to highlight, I'm going to be taking the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Platinum Ice Skin Frost Pro Palette. And I shall be taking a combination of the shades Pink Chill as well as Ice Cold. And I'm applying it using the same brush that I used to apply my blusher. And to complete the look, I'm going to be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Boldly Bare. And I'm just lining the lips, first of all. With the MAC Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Boldly Bare, now applied and filled in through the lips, I am now going to go in and apply some of Jeffree Star Cosmetics Velour Liquid Lipstick in the shade Gemini. Which is a very similar colour to Boldly Bare. It's got a slight little bit more pink in it though. So that completes the look. At this point, I'm definitely able to say that the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Concealers in the shade C1 and C2 are definitely applicable for the very fairest of skin tones. Of course, the packaging is a very obvious and visible feature about this product. It definitely reminds me of many, many numerous different things. It reminds me of things from my childhood. It actually reminds me of Polly Pockets a little bit. It reminds me of many, many different types of architecture. I think it's just a fun and innovative way of packaging a concealer. The component is rather fascinating. I could wear these as earrings. I probably would wear them as earrings. And they would certainly be very conveniently placed if you needed a touch up. But aside from the visible appearance of the concealer, I definitely think that the actual concealer itself has performed quite well. It hasn't oxidized. I've been wearing this for about one to two hours. It seems to have held up. I absolutely love the color of C2. It suits my skin marvelously. I could have gotten away with C1, but I think C1 would have made me look a little bit darker. Then of course there is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Star Setting Powder. However, I would describe this powder as being a no-nonsense powder. It is very matte and it's a slightly drier formula, but it isn't overly drying. I think you could apply quite a lot of this without it looking severely cakey, but I would apply it in moderation to begin with. Again, you have to get used to a product. It simply does what it says on the tin, as the old saying goes. I would like to seize this as the opportunity to congratulate Jeffree Star and all at Jeffree Star Cosmetics 
for the very recent launch of the Magic Star concealers as well as the Magic Star setting powders. And I wish them all the best of luck with their future product launches, product development and their growth as a brand. I have had a lot of fun creating this film for you here today and I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching and of course, take care. Bye.